Hello and welcome to Ember's Reading Room. Now it's time to say goodbye to the things we loved and the innocence of youth. How the time seemed to fly from our carefree lives and the solitude and peace we always knew. Yes, yes, it's time for the final two stories of my bedtime book of two-minute stories. Edited by Rosemary Garland, illustrated by Tony Escott and Sally Wellman. Wow. Just doesn't feel like... Wow. I know. Today's final stories are Harry the Helicopter by Margaret Connor and A Goat in the Garden by Rosemary Bromley. Kind of sad, really. <laughs> Thus the uh, little bit of lyrics at the beginning there. Name that series in the comments, maybe. <laughs> Harry the Helicopter. The big planes at the airport were talking excitedly. Buzz, buzz, buzz. They were so busy talking, they didn't notice Harry Helicopter arrive. Hello, everyone, called Harry. The big plane stopped talking then and looked at him. Oh, cried one. It's only Little Grasshopper. That was their nickname for Harry Helicopter. They said he hopped about like a grasshopper. They made fun of him, really. Harry didn't care. They may fly to faraway places, he told himself. But I can do something none of them can do. I can rise straight up into the air and come down where I like without having to use a runway. It always amused him to see the big planes circling round in the sky waiting their turn to land. And the fuss they made about it all when they did land. Even when they touched ground, they taxied along the runway. First this way, then that way, before at last they came to a halt. Even then, they stopped sometimes far away from the airport building, and the passengers had to board a bus to get there. Just imagine it. Harry Helicopter gave a little chuckle at the thought. Now, he could land on a flat roof of a house, and had often done so. Oh yes, there was no cause to make fun of him. But what was this the big planes were saying now? A strange plane was coming to land at the airport? There's fog at the airport where it usually lands, and it's been told to come here instead, said one of the big planes. It's bringing an important person, and he will be upset when he lands here, because this is too far away from where he needs to be, said another plane. Here comes the plane now, cried another big plane. They all watched as the strange plane circled round and round above the airport. Then down it came, and at last, the important person stepped out. But there was no fuss and bother as the big planes had expected. Oh no. The important person simply walked across and stepped into the waiting Harry helicopter. And in next to no time, Harry flew off and landed him exactly where he needed to be. He was delighted and said so to Harry's pilot. He even gave Harry a pat as he hurried off. The next time Harry went to the airport, the big planes stopped talking as soon as they saw him. They didn't call him Grasshopper either. They called him Harry. They were eager to know if he'd taken any more important persons anywhere. I'm doing it all the time, said Harry. Sometimes I take sick people to hospital, and sometimes I go to rescue people from boats that have struck a rock or drifted out to sea. I may not fly to faraway places like you, but I don't wish to. I'd rather be helping people who are in trouble or wanting to get somewhere quickly. The big planes didn't know what to say. They'd no idea that Harry led such an interesting life. They never made fun of him again. Not that Harry cared. He was much too busy to bother. You know when they said a strange plane? I thought they were going to um, talk about, let's see if I can remember the name of it. There's this one particular plane that can actually take off and land vertically. It's not the Harrier. Uh, that's one of them, though. <laughs> this one particular one is a prop plane, and I'm trying to remember the name of it. It's commonly used in the military, and I remember there being a big hoopla about a while ago where um, they were having a lot of accidents with it. Mm. Well, considering this was published in 1969 mm. in England, that may not have been around yet. Hmm. Either of them. Mm -hmm. Though this particular volume is the 1981 printing because that's when it was printed in the U.S. Yes, that was the first thing that popped into my head, but this is some really nice art. The people aren't that much detailed. Except for this shot over here where they actually look nicely proportioned and the faces have some detail to them. Well, that would be the very important person. Mm -hmm. Because in the story, it's mainly about the planes and the helicopter. 
Yeah, you can see all the different planes. They're all very nicely rendered. I just like the one that's up in the sky, the outline. It's really nice on that. Then we have the nice little helicopter shot by itself over here on this page. Very detailed, though. It reminds me less of a grasshopper and more of a dragonfly. But they were saying it because of the way he hopped around. Though, dragonfly, I think, would be rather accurate because they do hover and go straight up and down. But I think this may win for one of the shortest stories because you have a two-page spread along the entire bottom and taking up over half of the right-hand page. And then you have the image of Harry by himself on the left-hand page. So what were your thoughts on this story? And from an adult perspective, it was pretty predictable. But I like how Harry didn't care. Like, yeah, they can say whatever they want. I don't care. Yeah, that's a good view. You know, and he's not trying to put them down in turn. He just finds it amusing that they can't do what he can do. But they find it amusing that he can't do what they do. So on that perspective, it's more equal. But he doesn't badmouth the planes to their face. And the planes were openly ridiculing him. Shall we move on to the final story? And my brain suddenly went, a never-ending story. <laughs> Which is unfair, because that's only like 367 pages or so long. Hmm. Definitely not never-ending. Well, the story doesn't end. Only the book. Ah. A Goat in the Garden. William the Goat was a fine fellow. He had handsome horns, a long beard, and bright, mischievous eyes. Most of the time, he was content to live in the meadow belonging to Plum Tree Cottage. He had a comfortable hut to shelter in, and he was quite used to being tethered to the beech tree by a rope fastened to his leather collar. In fact, the rope was so long that he often forgot he was tied up at all. But sometimes, when he heard the children playing in the cottage garden, he longed to join in. One sunny afternoon, the meadow was bright with buttercups, Swallows were darting about the sky, and exciting noises were coming from the garden. I'm going to see what is happening, thought William. He set off towards the meadow gate. Suddenly, he stopped with a jerk. He had come to the end of his rope. Now what shall I do? He grunted. I know. I'll just pull and pull and pull. And that naughty goat tugged and he pulled until, snap, the rope parted. William snorted joyfully and trotted through the gate into the garden. The children, Robin and Jenny, were sitting on a rug, sipping lemonade and eating cream buns. Mother was handing a cup of tea to Aunt Martha, who was leaning comfortably back in her deck chair. Aunt Martha loved hats, especially summer ones, and a very smart straw hat lay on the grass by her side. Hmm, typo there. It says Aunt Martha. So, correcting that, now Aunt Martha was not the only one to like straw hats. William loved them, too. They tasted so delicious. His eyes sparkled, and he moved quietly forward towards Aunt Martha's chair. Just then, Mother saw him. William! she cried. What are you doing here? Go back to the meadow. William lowered his head. Shan't, he thought excitedly. Missing the hat with his mouth, he stuck one of his horns through it and charged off. My hat, my hat, wailed Aunt Martha. Somebody save it, please. Children, bring William's rope. I will try and tempt him back with a cake, cried Mother. Shaking with laughter, Jenny and Robin ran off to do as they were bid. But William did not mean to be caught so soon. He was enjoying himself far too much. Still wearing Aunt Martha's hat, he rushed towards a line of washing blowing gently in the breeze. Blackie, the cat who had been asleep in the washing basket, sat up. He arched his back and his fur bristled. Hello, cat, snorted William. Blackie spat loudly and ran up the clothesline pole. How rude, thought William. I shall chase him. Once more, he lowered his head and charged. Down came Mother's washing and away flew Blackie to the orchard. Scattering clothes all around him, William gave chase. My washing, cried Mother. From the branches of an apple tree, Blackie glared down at William as the goat pushed against the tree. But William had forgotten one thing. A family of geese lived in the orchard. 
Look at that stupid goat in a hat, said the gander. We don't want him here. Let's give him a fright. With necks outstretched, hissing loudly and looking very fierce, they rushed at William. The goat stood still. Oh, he thought, I don't like geese. I'm off. Caught you, cried Robin and slipped the rope through William's collar. Aunt Martha came and rescued her battered hat. William looked at her and wondered whether he might still try to nibble it. Perhaps not, he decided. Those geese have spoiled all my fun. And William meekly allowed himself to be led back to his beech tree. What a fun little story. Also, the art is very nice, very fun. I especially like the expressions in this picture and this picture. And I just saw him in that one. That expression's fun, too. Like, ooh, hat. Can mm -hmm. I get it? I think I want to use this first picture for the thumbnail. But they're all so fun. With those geese over there. Oh, well, geese can sound very fierce and be very loud. They make excellent guard birds. Oh, yeah. They, they can be mean. And loud. They are great alarms. I'm really enjoying the art in this one. It's the last of the two color art. It's well done. It's got lots of expression, lots of emotion, but I wouldn't call that cat glaring. No, up in the tree it looks pretty chill. I think maybe it's smiling because the goat's finally getting some comeuppance through the geese. What were your thoughts on this fun little story? It was fun. Uh, does he have to be tied up? Doesn't the meadow have fencing and gates? And if the rope's so long that he often forgets he's even tied up, it's long enough for him to get tangled in. That's not safe. Hmm. I think he has a bit of a smirk in this first image. Just a little bit. Like, I know what to do. Ah. And no more poems either. Nope. So, what were your thoughts on this book as a whole? It's been really fun going back through this because so many of these stories were ones that I would skip over on my own. Not that I didn't get all of them read to me at one point or another. But as you've heard throughout our journey, some stand out to me more than others. Some I remember better than others. Some I know I skipped when I was rereading on my own. But now that we've completed it, Lux is going to have to remember to add the picture in the front of the list of all the stories by title. And... The page in the back, because you have to use both of these together to get the authors for each story. And then the building of the two-minute bedtime story multiverse can begin. Cinematic universe. <laughs> That's like the coin phrase now. DC can't do it. Marvel can't. Here's a hint, DC. Let the people who did Wonder Woman do the rest of your movie. Also, basically, Disney is never going to let Marvel do anything to mess up the continuity of the Marvel Universe. Because that's a huge selling point for it. As much as they can, because there are errors throughout those movies, but this is about the books. <laughs> Final closing for this particular part of the series? I huh? wonder how long it actually took us to read all of this. Excusing our intros and outros... I don't know. These averaged about 15 minutes. But in some episodes we did two stories and in some we did three. And there are approximately 58 stories in this book. Two times 58 is 116 minutes, which is less than two hours. It definitely took us longer than that. Oh, yeah. All right. Proper closing. And this has been the final installment of My Bedtime Book of Two Minute Stories, edited by Rosemary Garland, illustrated by Tony Escott and Sally Wellman. Our final stories were Harry the Helicopter by Margaret Connor and A Goat in the Garden by Rosemary Bromley. And thank you to the authors of this book and the wonderful artists. We're going to have to do a little research and find out more about them. Thanks for listening. Now that the book's done in its entirety, hey look, a complete playlist beginning, middle, and end that you can binge watch. Also, there's lots of other story videos and there's pop culture videos. Yeah, we have lots of stuff if you like stuff. Also, if you like stuff, there, there's links for shopping so that you can get more stuff. 
like Amazon has this book and Ebates has almost everything, you know, being a referral site and all. Amazon and Ebates are not sponsors of or in any way affiliated with Ember's Reading Room or the content of the Lux Analysis channel. Thank you for listening.